So three integers. And the ways to get an even number is if x, y, and z are all even or x, y, or z are even and the other two are odd. Alright, so the probability of x and y and z being all even is equal to um, let's see 50 choose 3 because there are 50 even numbers and you want to choose 3 from them and the probability for x y or z being even so that's 50 choose 1 because you're picking only one of them and one of them has to be even plus the other two being odd so you have 50 odd numbers left so that's 50 choose 2 and that gives you the number of ways for picking three integers and their sum is even. So a is equal to 50 choose 3 plus 50 choose 1 plus 50 choose 2. And that is equal to, actually, sorry, it's multiply here. So multiply it, 50 choose 2. So you got 50 choose 3 is 19,600 plus, so 50 choose 1, sixty-one thousand. So here you got 61,250. And their sum is 80,850. Okay, so let's get the, the, the number of possibilities in the whole sample space. And that is just 50 choose 3. Actually, it's 100 choose 3 because you're picking 100 out of 100 numbers. So 100 choose 3 is equal to 1. Hundred thousand six sixty one and seven hundred. So the probability of A is this, the number of possibilities in A divided by the number of possibilities in the sample space. And that will be equal to eighty thousand eight hundred and fifty divided by one hundred sixty one thousand seven hundred. And that is equal to Oh, 80,850 divided by that's equal to 0 0.5 so the probability of uh, choosing three numbers and all of them being even is 50 percent okay so in this example we have an integer is selected at random from 3 through 17 inclusive so 3 to 17 if A is the event that a number that is divisible by 3 is chosen, and B is the event that a number exceeds 10. Alright, so before we even find anything, I'm going to go ahead and draw it. So A is divisible by 3, and B is uh, greater than 10. I'm not sure if it's greater than or equal to. Yeah, it's greater than 10. Alright, and the sample space is all the numbers between 3 and 17. Okay, so A, you're going to have 3, 6, 9, 10, 12, and 15. And B, you're going to have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. But notice that you have 12 and 15 in A and 12 and 15 in B. There, So you cancel them out from here and you go into the intersection. So in the intersection you have 12 and 15. 
and you're left with 11, 13, 14, 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer now. So the probability of A, well that's just three numbers out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, out of 9 numbers. So the probability of A is equal to 3 out of, um, how much was it again? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 numbers. So 3 over 9, which is 1 over 3. Okay, the next question is probability of B. So probability of B is equal to, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4 out of 9. 4 over 9. So that's A, that's B. Now C is probability of A union B. That's probability of A union B. And that is equal to the whole sample space. Because you're picking everything inside A, everything inside B, and their intersection. So that's just equal to 9 over 9, which is 1. And now we have D, the probability of A intersection B. So D. So intersection is just everything they have in common, which is 2, which is these numbers here. That's 2 out of 9. Probability of A intersection B, 2 over 9. All right, and then we have asymmetric difference B. So E is the probability of A symmetric difference B. And that is equal to everything in A and everything in B, but not their intersection. So you have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So seven numbers. So that's 7 over 9. Okay, and now part... F and part G are a bit more tricky. So if C, which is probability of A union B, so how is uh, A union B related to the probability of A, the probability of B, and the probability of A intersection B? Alright, so if you look at the a, the intersection, it's actually being counted twice. So if you take the probability of B, you're taking everything inside here. And if you're taking the probability of A, then you're taking everything inside here. And notice that we're counting the intersection twice. If you just uh, go A union B. So if you're actually counting Normally, like we have the, in the first time, we had 12 and 15, and here you had 12 and 15. Then you're going to be counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you'll have 11 numbers, even though you're counting 12 and 15 twice. And that's why, in the first place, I went ahead and drew it just to make sure we don't count it twice. Alright, so the probability of how is C related to A, B, and D? Alright, so C and A, B, and D. Alright, so the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. But remember that now we're counting A and B, the intersection, we're counting it twice. One for A and one for B. That will be minus one of the intersection. So you only get it once instead of two. And the last one is the probability of A in symmetric difference B. How is that related to A, B, and D? Alright, so remember the symmetric difference was everything except the intersection. So everything outside here. So everything in here and everything in here, but not what's in the middle. So probability of A symmetric difference B, that will be equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. And remember that you counted the intersection for once for A and once for B.
and you want to get rid of the intersection altogether. So you have to subtract 2 of the intersection, and that will give you this formula here. So th this is the formula for symmetric difference, and this is the formula for union. Alright, I hope this video made some sense, and I'll see you in the next video.